Okay guys, how's it going? So anyone who knows my fiddly little channel will know that I often spend my Saturday evenings answering the big questions, the really important questions, the ones that you just, you, you know, you can't get to sleep unless you have answers to these questions. So I devote my time and my energy and my massive brain to answering some of these questions. So the one that was uh, troubling me recently was to do with digital displays on LCD watches and how they fare up against the sort of the newer technologies. So this is the uh, the GBX100, which came out a few months ago, and it has that uh, MIP, memory in pixel uh, display, which really is a big sort of step up from the sort of traditional LCD displays. Um, and so I thought, what I thought to do, I thought I'd get together a few different examples of different negative LCD displays. So you may or may not have watched a video I did before where I compared standard LCD to negative LCD and the standard beat the negative, you know, hands down really quite easily in terms of legibility and clarity. Um, and what I was then curious about is out of the negative displays, which I do have a bit of a penchant for, uh, which is the best and how do they fare up? And, you know, where, where does your money go when it comes to the display technology? So I've got a wide arrangement here. So down at the um the left end this is a little cheap casio this is uh the a 168 wem one ef and that has the 3298 uh, module on it so it's a really basic bog standard uh, casio you can get those for about 25 or 30 pounds so really sort of cheap and cheerful but you know quite quite cute um and then here we have a sort of standard average fair uh, negative g-shock um so they, they've been they've been in this model for a little while now this is the gw uh so it's the m5610 1ber and that's got the 3159 module in there and then we have a full metal so the full metal range you know they're considerably more expensive than the rest of the range uh these have the uh, the three four five nine modules in them so even like the very top end sort of 1400 pound um titanium full metals and these uh full metals they will have the same modules so the screen technology is pretty much the same throughout that range uh and the, you can pick these up for around about sort of 400 pounds and you know, these for about about 130 pounds around about that kind of area and then this is the GBX100, and this is that fancy new MIP display, and you can pick these up for around about £120, so they're not particularly expensive, but it's just a newer technology in the display. And like I said, I've got a real thing for negative displays. I just like the way they look. They just uh, they suit me, um, regardless of the fact that they do not function as well in terms of doing their job of telling the time as a standard LCD. So regardless of that fact, I still like buying negative displays anyway so what i thought i'd do is i'd basically check the viewing angle across this range here just to see how the technology has sort of progressed and also whether you know with these two you know that you've got quite a big difference in price this one costs about four times more than this one um, so it is a pretty expensive watch and i know a lot of that money is going into the actual bracelet and not in into the technology um, but either way it's still the latest and greatest that they have in that range for the sort of negative display G-Shocks. So what I did is I basically measured with my scientific scientific equipment, I measured the, the tilt axis, um, so the basically the up down, you know, the roll of the watch, and then the pan axis um, left and right, basically. So I measured the viewing angle um, in two different ways. Um, so slightly more advanced than my last test. I, I measured it in whether you could read the time at all so whether it was legible and then also whether it was clear so if you know if the light was a bit bad or you're squinting at it quickly whether it was a clear display um or whether you really do have to like have a, a good old close look to be able to read it so i came up with a bunch of different uh results for those there so let's um let's have a quick look at the tests and then we'll hop into uh, the the results, so you can sort of get an idea of how these all fare in terms of legibility and clarity, and f basically the functionality of the display. So let's have a look.
Okay, there you go, guys. So that's the little bit of testing I did this afternoon, and hopefully it's very self-evident and doesn't need explaining by me. But the device that I use uh, to measure the angles is very accurate. So as long as I uh, do a pretty good job of ticking off when it starts to be legible and when it starts to be clear and you know as you can tell by my labels on the screen there hopefully you agree that I got that I was pretty objective and you know I didn't let too much um, ambiguity or subjectivity come into it I tried to be as accurate as possible anyway so the results are let's have a look so as you can see this new uh, MIP technology memory in pixel technology on these um, these newer uh, GBX models and quite a few of the other other G-Shocks have this dis this display technology in them really does kick the ass of the older technology so even a you know a 1400 pound uh, full metal G-Shock the dis it, it does get its displays ass kicked by a 120 pound uh, little uh, GBX 100 so you know if legibility is important to you and you like your negative displays like me this is the results as you can see it, it's not quite a sort of a full you know an extra extra sort of 50 percent on top but you know when you've got numbers like 123 degrees um, it being clear on the tilt axis and 99 degrees on the pan axis for the MIP that really does absolutely kick the ass of the full metal with its uh, 71 and 45 degrees um, as you can see that it's the the full metal shock stays legible for considerably longer certainly than a standard uh, Casio a standard um, you know module unit in a basic G-Shock or a basic Casio uh, but it's still getting its ass kicked pretty clearly in, in terms of what's clear and what is not clear to read. Um, certainly with the MIP watch that I'm, I'm using here, the fact that the numbers are a lot larger uh, does make a big difference. There is obviously different um, modes and different screen displays, and if you choose one of those, that does vary the results quite a lot. But I chose the biggest and clearest display that the um, the GBX100 has to offer to basically give it sort of its, its you know, to show its, its in its best colors if that makes sense um anyway guys there you go that's the results um yeah hopefully it all makes sense and do we care we probably don't we just like buying these things anyway don't we let's face it <laughs> but anyway i just thought i'd uh it's nice to put some hard numbers and some uh you know very clear clear sort of stats down for you so you can really know exactly how much clearer you know one of these is to one of these and certainly to a basic cheap Casio um, when it comes to negative displays. Anyway guys peace out and I hope that silly little test was uh, remotely interesting. Cheers guys bye.